Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now what we have here is the Atom Man G7 PT from Minis Forum. I've wanted to test this out for a while because it features the somewhat scarce AMD Radeon RX 7600M XT graphics, a mid-range mobile solution that in my opinion hasn't been utilised enough since it launched in 2023. As part of the G7 PT it's paired with a Ryzen 9 7945HX with 16 cores and 32 threads. This model is also configured with 32 gigs of 5200MHz dual channel DDR5 and a 1TB M.2 SSD. A bare bones option is also available if you want to add up to 96GB of RAM and 4TB of storage yourself. The G7 PT is powered by a 300 watt power brick, the cable of which can be discreetly connected underneath the magnetic stand. While we're on the subject of power, we can choose between two power modes for the CPU here, balanced and performance. In balanced mode, we're going to see the 7945HX run at 60 65 watts, whereas performance mode will bump this up to 85. There's a little indicator on the front to tell you which mode you're in. The RGB side lights are just for show, they don't change based on temperature or anything like that. You can turn them off from within the BIOS if you want to. There are of course temperature changes between the two modes and therefore noise level changes too as the fans ramp up. We're talking an increase from about 40 decibels in balance mode to 45 in performance mode during intensive gaming scenarios. Nothing of major concern. In terms of performance changes, the benefits of the higher power mode are best seen in CPU intensive tasks as reflected by the CPU-Z bench test results. When it comes to gaming, which we touched on just now, I didn't notice any frame rate improvement simply because the Radeon GPU is the limitation as part of this setup. It's going to hit 99-100% to utilisation before the processor even breaks a sweat, so I'd suggest leaving the machine in balanced mode anyway because the 7600M XT is still going to be reaching its full potential and with that said it's time to see what this 8GB Radeon GPU can do as part of this little beast. So for the reasons outlined previously I did leave the machine in balanced mode during this testing. And while the GPU is rated for up to 120 watts according to the spec sheet I didn't actually see it hit that across any of my tested games today. So it didn't use as much power as I anticipated. I thought I'd throw this thing in at the deep end as it were and uh, try ray tracing uh, in Cyberpunk 2077 because of course this does support RT and therefore it supports the RT Ultra preset. Now if you want to use ray tracing on a mid-range mobile GPU like the 7600M XT then you are going to need help from FSR in those more intensive titles and in Cyberpunk here with FSR set to balanced mode we saw 40 37 FPS with a 1% low of 37 and a 0.1% low of 33 so it was still pretty good pretty consistent to be fair but I'd probably suggest leaving ray tracing off across most of the games if you're using this sort of hardware. For Cyberpunk 2077 with RT off, which is what I'd recommend, it also turns out we don't need FSR enabled either, even at the high preset, because we saw 78 FPS with a 1% low of 63 and a 0.1% low of 53, so at 1080p in even demanding games like this, it's going to do pretty well. While we're putting this thing through its paces, I thought we may as well go with Starfield next, another intensive title. Now, to achieve at least 60 FPS on average, we could take the easy way out here and enable FSR, but I decided to stick with native resolution at 100% res scale with the medium preset to achieve 62 FPS. The 1% low was 45 and the 0.1% low was 37. Again, the temperature for the CPU is sitting below 80 degrees in 65 watt mode and the temperature for the GPU is at the low 60s. We're consuming less than 100 watts of power on the GPU side of things as far as Starfield is concerned. Now Elden Ring is capped at 60 FPS and here with the high preset it had no trouble hitting this. We saw 60 exactly. 56 FPS was the 1% low and the 0.1% low was 46. Now I was expecting a few dips and drops here, not sure why, but this system and the game proved me wrong because this was a very consistent experience. Of course, the GPU isn't being utilized all that much here because of the 60 FPS cap. If we did remove it, it would probably jump up to 99, 100% utilization. But in the case of Elden Ring, that won't happen with this hardware. 
Next, we just had to try Counter-Strike 2. Normally, I'd go with the low settings, but because this is a GPU benchmark, I thought I'd go with high. And even at the high preset, we saw 316 FPS on average. The 1% low was 157, and the 0.1% figure was 87. So again, pretty smooth overall. Certainly more than enough to wipe out the enemy players, if you're good at the game, that is, which I am not. But there we are. Baldur's Gate 3, and here we saw 96 FPS. It's certainly more intensive when you're in busier areas, like the city, for example. This is going to be the hardest hitting in terms of performance drops. We do see the odd dip and drop here and there, which I tend to notice across a lot of my hardware anyway, and overall, the 96 FPS average was pretty respectable. The 1% low was 47, and the 0.1% low was 33, so not as smooth as other games, but definitely more than playable here and enjoyable too. Now for Red Dead Redemption 2, I started off with Digital Foundry's console equivalent settings, but I found that we were getting almost 150 FPS in some areas, so I thought we could definitely afford to turn things up a bit. I still think we could have gone higher still, because at 1080p with the ultra textures, everything else set to high, the geometry LOD set to max, and the grass LOD or level of detail set to 2 out of 10 with TAA, we saw 112 FPS, so I don't think 1440p or even 2160p is off the cards for this hardware. It does run really well on this setup. 112 FPS overall with a 1% low of 86 and a 0.1% figure of 74. I also started off a little bit cautious, let's say with GTA 5. For some reason, I went with normal settings and we were seeing like 180 something FPS, which I think this game might max out at something like 187, could be wrong. 1080p with the highest settings and the maxed advanced settings here still gave us 162. In fact, all of the figures on screen sat at over 100, including the 0.1% low. So 1440p and 2160p, I would say, are two resolutions that are definitely doable for this hardware and the 7600 MXT from AMD. I probably could have enabled some form of MSAA if I wanted to rather than FXAA too. Apex Legends has been added back into the benchmark roster here. I do like playing this in solo mode these days. Ultra textures with everything else set to high. The frame rate cap was removed from within Steam, um, but there is a hard cap of about 300 FPS, I believe. Usually it's 144 until you uncap it, and with the ultra textures and everything else high with TSAA, we saw over 200 FPS with decent percentile lows. 228 as an average, 164 as that 0.1%, sorry, 1% figure, and 15 six as that 0.1% number so easy enough to remain very competitive here again if you're good at the game which I most certainly am not finally then we have Fortnite which of course can be demanding when you turn the settings right up but in DX12 with the high preset here 100% resolution scale and nanite and lumen off these actually turned on by default so I turn them off here and then with TAA as well, we saw 137 FPS. I'd recommend keeping Nanite and Lumen off, at least on hardware like this. Overall, performance was pretty good with a few dips and drops as to be expected here. But yeah, I'd recommend capping the frame rate for this one. As it just seems to run a lot better in DX11 or DX12 mode with the frame rate capped, to be honest. But there we go. The Ataman G7 PT from Minis Forum. As I said, been looking forward to testing this one for a long time. The bare bones model currently in the UK is retailing for 989 and it's just over 1100 right now if you spec it the same as I have done here with 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. We do have to mention, of course, as always, that you could build a system from scratch for less money. But with, as always with these mini PCs, I think they do cater to a different market. And I always like to test them out because I think a lot of people are interested in them more so than even a couple of years ago these days. And the hardware that gets crammed inside these things sometimes is, is just pretty impressive. So hopefully this helps someone out. If you're looking to buy one of these, you're not quite sure how it's going to perform. Hopefully this will help you and I'll leave a link as always below. Thanks to all of you for watching and let me know your thoughts as always in the comments section. I'll see you all next time when we'll be testing something a little cheaper and by that I mean it cost me like £2. So yeah, hope to see you then.